Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's tutorial. We're going to be talking about traffic patterns today. What are traffic patterns? Why are they used? And how do we fly a traffic pattern? I'm going to start with giving you a bit of a background on traffic patterns, and then we're going to talk about how they're being flown, and then I'm going to show that practically in the simulator. What are traffic patterns? Traffic patterns are racetrack patterns that we fly around airfields. Every airfield has a traffic pattern, and these traffic patterns are the same for all airplanes. They're standardized. This means that all airplanes follow specific altitudes and specific entry procedures. Usually, you fly them at 1,000 feet above ground level with propeller aircraft and 1,500 feet above ground level with jet airplanes. So if my airfield is at 2,000 feet above sea level, then I'd be flying my traffic pattern at 3,000 feet above sea level if I was a propeller aircraft. 3,500 feet above sea level was a jet airplane. The entry of traffic patterns is at a 45 degree angle to the downwind leg. What that is exactly is what we're going to talk about in a moment. That's used in Europe. In America and other countries, the procedures are obviously different. Now, in most countries, however, entering during the downwind leg is perfectly acceptable and entering at a 45 degree angle to the downwind leg you can never go wrong internationally, which is why I chose this as my example to enter the traffic pattern. Why are traffic patterns used? Traffic patterns are used for several reasons. First of all, they provide a separation between departing and arriving airplanes. Around an airfield, usually, it's very busy with a lot of airplanes coming to the same place. If everybody just approached the runway the way he wanted to, then there'd be a lot of mid-air collisions. However, with the traffic pattern, all airplanes use the same route, all airplanes can easily spot each other because everybody knows where to look. And that will basically lead to all airplanes around the world flying the same routes everywhere. It means that everybody knows where to look and where to fly, and there will be less mid-air collisions, so it's a safety reason. Secondly, it allows pilots to maintain visual contact with the airfield. Remember, during VFR flight, it's important that we fly using what we see outside of the cockpit, so terrain features for navigation. This also means that if you want to land at an air airfield, we must maintain visual contact with the airfield for the entire approach, otherwise it's not possible to approach the airfield under visual conditions. Basically, that means that no matter where we're flying, we always see the airfield from the traffic pattern. That's guaranteed. And even with terrain features included in the equation, usually airfields offer traffic patterns that are fairly safe and where you can always see the airfield. Now, in case you're interested in where to find which traffic pattern to fly, usually traffic patterns are always flown the same way. We're going to look at that in a moment. However, almost all airfields do have traffic patterns published in their VFR charts, so that if you want to see how to fly in that traffic pattern, then you can just use the VFR chart. Many major airports in Europe have VFR approaches, which are a bit different from traffic patterns, and we're going to talk about those in a separate tutorial video. For this tutorial, we're talking about traffic patterns, which are used at most minor airports and at almost every airfield in the US, except for the very biggest. How are traffic patterns flown? Basically, if we take a look at this picture, we're going to see that we have two traffic patterns here. We have a left-hand traffic pattern, which is the standard way of flying it, and we have a right-hand traffic pattern, which is the non-standard way of flying traffic patterns. Basically, during a left-hand traffic pattern, all turns we make are to the left. This is the standard way of doing it because pilots in fixed-wing airplanes always sit on the left side of the cockpit, or most of the time they sit on the left side of the cockpit, which means that they have the best view if they are flying a left-hand traffic pattern, as indicated by the red traffic pattern here. Traffic pattern's got several legs. It's got the departure leg, or upwind leg, where the wind is coming straight at the airplane. Remember, airplanes always land into the wind. Then it's got the crosswind leg, where the wind is coming straight from the side. It's got the downwind leg, which is this long leg parallel to the runway here that I'm pointing out with my mouth at the moment, which is where the airplane is flying directly with the wind, so the wind's coming from behind. The base leg, which is basically the crosswind leg in reverse on the approach end of the runway. And the final approach leg, just the final descent to landing. And what we're going to talk about now is first we're going to talk about the altitudes you have to maintain. Then we're going to talk about 
ATC procedures, so who do I have to talk to, how do I have to talk to them during my traffic pattern, and then we're going to have to talk to, uh, then we're going to have to talk about, not to, entry and exit procedures for traffic patterns in Europe, and, well, the international variants also. So, basically, we're going to start out by taking off. Obviously, you get your takeoff or departure clearance from the tower of the airfield. You get your taxi clearance from the ground to the runway, then you get your takeoff and departure clearance from the tower. After we've got our takeoff clearance, we're basically going to start our takeoff roll and depart. On the departure leg, we're going to climb up to about 300 feet above ground level. Then we're going to start a left turn into the crosswind leg, or a right turn on the right-hand traffic pattern. Then we're going to continue climbing to about 700 feet, 600 feet above ground level. That altitude, basically going to make a left turn onto downwind, and we're going to start flying downwind. We're going to achieve about 1,000 feet above ground level, right on the first bit of downwind here. We're going to start our descent once we're a beam to the runway. Once we're here, we're going to start descending again. We're going to make our turn about 900 feet above ground level onto base, then to final, and finally we're going to descend onto the runway and land there. The same thing goes for the right-hand traffic pattern. Also, nothing different except for the direction of the turn. In terms of ATC um, communications, fairly easy. We're going to talk with the tower for the entire traffic pattern. What we're going to do is we're going to get told which traffic patterns it's going to, it's going to be, right-hand or left-hand traffic pattern. We're also going to tell if there's any anomalies with the altitude in our takeoff clearance. After we've got that, we're going to take off. We're going to contact them again on downwind. So then basically we're going to say something like uh, Cessna 123 is on a left downwind for runway 9, requesting full stop landing or requesting touch and go, depending on what you want to do. For runway 19. Then Tower is going to tell you to hold or uh, fly circles in case of a landing airplane here, or they're going to tell you to extend the downwind, which means you're going to fly longer downwind, or they're going to clear you to land or touch and go or whatever you want to do, low approach, something like that, or they're going to clear you for base or final. If they clear you for one of these legs, that automatically also clears you for the next leg until landing. The only thing it doesn't give you is landing clearance. So in most cases, what they're going to do is they're going to say, cleared to con clear to land, or clear to touch and go, Cessna 123, or they're going to say, Cessna 123, extend downwind, or they're going to say, Cessna 123, continue the approach. Obviously, they're also always going to give you the winds, but we're going to see that in a moment when you're going to fly the traffic pattern in the simulator. Now, entering and exiting the traffic pattern. This is from the United States Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. So goes especially for the United States, but it also goes for Europe. You leave the downwind at a 45 degree angle to crosswind, and you enter at a 45 degree angle to downwind. In Europe, you'd enter at the beginning of downwind. In America, apparently, you enter at the middle of the downwind. Now, same thing goes for right-hand downwind. It goes for the left-hand downwind. Just other turn directions. Now, VFR traffic patterns are obviously only flown when it's the weather permits, so you can't do that in IFR conditions. And they go for night flights as well as for day flights, as long as they're under VFR rules. Um, there's going to be another tutorial about what VFR actually is and what makes that different from IFR and how to fly that in the simulator. So, we're going to continue now flying this in, flight, in our flight simulator. Tonight it's going to be repaired. And we're going to be using BATSIM ATC to simulate ATC. So I'll be right back and we'll see each other once we're started up and in the sim. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard our airplane for today. Before we start with our flight, we're just going to take a quick look at the vPilot setup. So we've got uh, NOC Tower Online today, which is going to be our tower for the day. And we're going to take a quick look at a flight plan. So we're going to be flying VFR from NOC to NOC. I entered the route as Direct 2. We're not a heavy aircraft today. We'll be using default scenery, which is something I always like to include, just so they know that, because that's going to change the taxi instructions. I included the aircraft type, and uh, well, basically a bit of a specification here. It's a single-engine ultralight, 
it's just including TechNAM P2002 Sierra, that could be anything, but now they know about my capabilities a bit, what I'm doing, and that I'm recording on frequency. So that's kind of a heads up. Exactly. So my departure time, I'm actually going to have to change that. So we change that to about 20. 30 Zulu and we have to fuel and time should be all good with about 30 minutes then route and my cruise speed and cruise altitude all set up my voice is good so basically that's okay to fire the flight plan and then the next step I'm going to just move this over to the second screen and concentrate on flying the airplane all right I'm going to pop up the check it list here. I'm using uh, Ants Airplanes Sierra LSA, which is a flight for the airplane. I'll leave that up for you guys here so you can give it as a checklist. Now, I know that my weight and balance flight controls are working, but I'd like to check that actually moving them through all positions. Put in my rudder pedals. So, there you go. Now I'm going to check. Left bank actually moves the left ear one up. Right bank moves it down. Parking brake set, throttles idle, then we're going to turn on the master switch, check to generator light, which is on, and on the fuel pump, have an audible sound, turn back off, and turn off the master switch, check all the earlier tank levels. They're good, they're basically full. Okay, so the next step is the before start checklist, the parking brakes parked, my flight controls already checked, I put a little bit of idle and master switch is on my generator light does come on my trim control and trim switch is set my fuel quantity is checked my mask is back off i'm actually not going to lock my canopy i'm going to open that because the mp2 you see it can fly with an open canopy and it gives you a bit more sound and it's probably going to help you hear a few things so parking brakes park master switch on fuel selector valve on here electric coming on so my fuel pressure gauge, that's the one down there, read zero bars. Just about now. And you turn the electric off. Take the strokes off, we won't be using that. And ignition switch. Actually, we might want to use it. Probably pretty cold. Ignition switch is on. Ah, oh, this is first start. Engine is still running up. And I'm turning off my stroke. In RPM, I'm going to set that to about 2000. And happy to warm up. Okay, so then we're going to wait for the airplane to warm up. So if we take this out, we're going to start talking to ATC in just a second. Before we do that, turn on my GPS. Set my squat code to 7. Thousand, which is the classic VFR score code, and I'm going to reset my frequency to the tower frequency 430.567. Now connected to the tower, reset my altimeter. Be good. So I can set my GPS here. I can turn on a few lights. That one off there. Uh, the instrument lights. All right, so now that we've set up our simulator and our airplane, I'm going to turn on pilot passenger visual visibilities. So we can see those guys. Get myself back to the cockpit. Okay, now that we're here, we can actually start to call up ATC. First, we're going to ask for taxi clearance. I won't be talking a lot about the, the procedure after this, because I'll basically just be flying it down because I'll have to concentrate on flying and on the ATC communication. Our call sign for today is Golf from your Alpha Yankee Zulu, by the way. Okay. Let's start this. Knock Tower, Golf from your Alpha Yankee Zulu. Good evening. The Yankees are doing not very evening. Go ahead. Goal from the Alpha Yankee Zulu is requesting taxi to the active runway for VFR traffic pattern. Alpha Yankee Zulu, taxi 
Taxi Alpha, hold short runway 2608 or be runway 26 for departure. Report your runoff checks complete, ready for departure. Taxi runway 26 via Alpha and we'll contact you when we're ready for departure. Golf runway Alpha Yankee Zulu. Alright, so basically we just received our taxi clearance, which told us that we were okay to taxi via taxiway Alpha all the way to um, the runway, or runway 26 in our case. So basically we are now just going to do a 360 and follow the yellow taxiway lines all the way until we're at Oh, uh, not using my differential brakes here because this airplane doesn't have differential brakes. Oh. So basically now I'm just going to taxi straight up to my runway. I'm going to get ready for departure. And I'm going to inform tower that I'm ready for departure. Alright, during taxi it's my goal to maintain the yellow center line and to not run onto any runways where we're not exactly clear to go onto such as runway 26, or in the simulator runway 27, because the numbers haven't been updated for a while and repaired, obviously. And I'm also trying to keep my RPM at about 2,000 on my engine to respond and warm up. I'll just slow the airplane down here. And then I'll fix Stop it entirely. And I'm going to turn on my parking brakes because now I've got a bit more checklist to do. So we went before takeoff. So my parking brakes parked. My altimeter is set. My avionics and array is all correspondingly on. Cylinder head temperature and that's over here. And oil, water temperature and oil temperature are all good. Fuel pressure is good. Fuel quantity is good. Battery charge is good. Flaps, we're going to set those down to three. I'm going to increase to 4,000 RPM because now we're going to do the addition to the test. Oops, we jumped there. So, mission system 1 is checked. Drop, and return to the normal value. System number 2, we have a drop. Return to the normal value. Pull on carb heat. Return to the normal value. Push back in, shake is off. Let's go back to 2,000. RPM, so that I can maintain my temperature, my cylinder head and other temperatures, my fuel tank selectors are both on, flaps are set to 15 degrees, my trim is centered, and I'm going to turn my transponder, oh, it's already in altitude mode, ready for departure, I'm going to contact ATC, and I'm going to perform my procedure. Golf Yankee Zulu is ready for departure. Golf Yankee Zulu will be right hand surface, runway 26, now the Golf Tree, because it feeds Quark 0103. Right hand traffic patterns, runway 26, not above 3000 feet, Squawk 0103, Golf Yankee Zulu. Golf Yankee Zulu, we back correct to Alpha. Golf from A26, surface wind checks, 150 degrees, crosswind 10 knots. Okay, cleared for takeoff, runway 26. Okay, so basically what he just told us was our traffic pattern info, which was right hand traffic pattern, so we're going to be flying right hand turns today. Then uh, runway 26, not above. 3,000 feet, we're at about 600 feet here today, so uh, we'll be easily within our traffic pattern altitude, which is going to be about 1,600 feet. And then we're going to have a squawk code to set, which is um, 0103, which is set down in the transponder so that the ATC can identify us easily. And we're going to turn our squawk to mode Charlie in the VATSIM transponder, and I'll be right back. Alright, so we're lined up with the runway, turning on our fuel pumps, and there it goes. 
that thing after that. Oh, two eight eight can't wait for established for a touching go. Fox two eight eight tell Roger same as before. Uh, back for the other thing. After the touching go, we'd like to redirect to Paul. Fox two eight eight is copied. After departure, it will be a left turn out on track to Bow. I can climb 5,000 feet to touch and go 26, surface wind 150 degrees crosswind 10. Feet to touch and go 26, I'll depart to left and I'll go on all the time and I'll touch 5,000 feet back to it. Takes them just climbing to 300 feet above ground level. Gosh, Yankee Zulu, airborne at 33, clear for right hand circuit, report downwind. We'll report downwind to go off Yankee Zulu. Golf Yankee 2, your traffic to TC12 is on the ILS runway 26, you can report traffic inside. Okay, we'll report the traffic inside, Golf Yankee 2. Alright, so basically just told us uh, that we have traffic on the ILS approach. We're going to report that traffic inside, currently I'm doing my right turn to crosswind. Now we could see the traffic in a moment here behind our hood. The is really helping us there. And basically we're going to turn until we have the 2-6 heading right aside and we're at a bit higher than we want it to be. There's the runway, see that? So I'm going to throttle back so that my airplane stays at this altitude, about 2,000 feet, which is a bit high for our current uh, aircraft type, but that's okay. And we're going to start a right hand turn. We have the traffic in sight. Checking for the other side also, in case the traffic goes, he didn't notice. It's unlikely, but you never know. And we're descending a little so that we can get back or to a better traffic altitude here. Yeah. The runway in sight, and we're basically just uh, flying to downwind now. I'm going to call the downwind in a second. Okay. Golf Yankee Zulu is on a right downwind for runway 26. Requesting a touch and go on runway 26. We have the traffic inside. Golf Yankee Zulu behind that traffic when ready to right base 526 report. Okay, we're going to turn right base behind the traffic and we'll report on final, Golf Yankee Zulu. So basically we're just told to turn final behind the traffic, which is the airplane you can see. And once we're behind them, we're going to turn onto our final leg and start the approach so that we don't conflict with him. And we're going to tell ATC once we're on final. Alright, so I've got my fuel pump on all the time here so that in case my engine, uh, my mechanical fuel pump fails, my electrical one will immediately take over automatically. I'm turning on car heat because I'm using low power and it might be that my car range app is up, which we definitely don't want. And now I'm basically a beam the runway, which means that I'm going to start my descent. And I can just do that because the airplane that we are supposed to follow is really very, very close already. I'm basically just going to start my descent here to about 900 feet above ground level while well, I start my turn to base. And I'm going to drop the flaps in order to start decelerating here. And the airplane a bit of downward trim. Turning there. Okay. Not good evening. It's Golf Whiskey Alpha Charlie Whiskey again. Uh, this time Robin DR400. Uh, request taxi to the circuits and I'm at the GA parking. Thanks. Golf Charlie Whiskey. Oh, Charlie Whiskey, no problem. You can taxi Alpha Hold Shore 2608, report your run up check complete, ready for departure. Okay, great. Taxi by Alpha 20826, and I'll report ready. Thanks, Charlie Whiskey. Basically, um, just had another aircraft check in that's going to have traffic patterns here tonight. So we're going to have a busy airfield. Good. And we're going to report final. Fox 280, clear left turn out and track bow, climb to 5,000, you can report passing. Report passing 4,000. 
Golf Yankee Zulu is turning final on runway 26. Golf Yankee Zulu is here touching goal runway 26, right hand circuit, surface wind 150, crosswind 100. Okay, cleared right traffic after touch and go, runway 26, wind copied, Golf Yankee Zulu. So we've just cleared our touch and go, and we're basically just going to approach the runway now and land the airplane as softly as we can. We can make that soft. The 10 knots wind, which was what he told us, but uh, actually, as I'm flying with clear weather here, because I wanted to show you traffic patterns under normal conditions. Fox Gonna experience. Fox Contact Shannon 13115, Sierra Okay, that's the so, the lights you can see on the left of the runway, which are four lights, the PAPI system. Um, two white lights, the two red lights show the optimum angle. Three whites are a bit too high, four whites are very high, and three reds are very low. Four reds are way too low. Basically, this is a system that allows us to guide the airplane down visually without the aid of ILS landing systems or things like that. And I'm basically currently just approaching. I don't mind that I'm a bit high here because I am an airplane that can descend very quickly and an airplane that has a very short landing distance so I wouldn't have any issues at all. There's the other airplane we just saw. There's also going to be doing traffic patterns here tonight, keeping in the power right up until touchdown on this airplane so that the temperatures don't drop too harshly. And there's the landing and full power. And departure. 